Hello all, welcome back to this channel, this space where the Holy Spirit has free reign. I want to share a word with you all today. The Holy Spirit has revealed that 2024 is definitely a year of trying and testing. And I was talking to the Lord about um, the Christians. And I was telling God that in seven months will be the election. And that was significant to me. You know, what Lord do you want us to do and accomplish as the body of Christ in seven months you know and then so on but i was dealing with the next seven months until the election and the lord was was revealing to me that during that time there'll be lots of um unrest among the people there will be lots of things that feel jolted that's the word in the spirit that I hear is jolted. Now, I haven't had the opportunity yet to go look that up. Um, I believe that means something that's electrically charged um, or electri electrically stunned. So it sounds like something that may happen um, kind of off guard, um, but that the environment, the culture, the nation will be jolted. Um, with so many things and there'll be unrest. Um, and so the Lord was talking to me about the, just the people and, you know, he was talking about separation of the church, um, the church buildings and the separation of Christians. Um, and as I told you guys many times before, and I'm probably going to continue to share this dream um, because I keep being led by the Holy Spirit to share it. Um, and it's, it may sound redundant, but when you catch it in your spirit, it'll be more com com confirm confirming for you. It won't be redundant. And oh, here she is talking about that dream again. It'll be more like, okay, Lord, this is you, rem excuse me, reminding us that the times we're in those times. Get ready, prepare ourselves. The Lord will be sending a lot of his servants now in this season to help prepare the people. Now, when the times come that his service has been preparing his people for, reminding us and warning us about, it'll be up to you what you do in the seasons that we are um, prophesying about that are coming. And the Lord was talking to me about do this and you're... The Bible says that any man who wants to follow me must first deny himself. Uh, the first thing God wants us to do is deny ourselves, not call ourselves a Christian. So in order to follow Christ, the prerequisite is not call yourself Christian. Um, the prerequisite is to deny your flesh. Secondly, he says, pick up your cross. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So he wants you to deny yourself daily. There should be a daily burial of your flesh. Now something that's buried, you can't hear. It doesn't have um, any say so in the land of the living if it's buried. And so God wants us to make sure that we deny our flesh, kill it completely. And then he wants us to pick up our cross and then we can follow him. Sounds so strange because, you know, when you think physically, it's harder to follow somebody when you're carrying something. But the great thing about what Jesus is telling us to do is that he gives us grace to do it as long as we do it with him. Right. In conjunction with him, together with him. So in the spirit, whenever you deny your flesh. Now you freed yourself up to carry a cross with the Lord Jesus Christ. What a beautiful thing. And so the Lord was talking about the division that he's been bringing. And over the couple past two weeks, he's been talking to me specifically 
about um, the scripture that says, uh, don't think that I've come to bring peace for I haven't come to bring peace on earth, but instead I've come to bring a sword. And then he goes on to talk about the separation that happens when you bring a sword. A sword cuts, a sword separates one side of people to one side and then others to the other. He goes on to describe that he's coming to separate and pit mother against daughter and father against son and mother-in-law in -law against daughter-in-law. And these are the things that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, says that he has come to do. And one thing that the Lord is bringing into my spirit now is how he has... Um, he has mentioned multiple times in the Holy Scriptures that false prophets will come saying, peace, peace, but there is no peace. And I think that a lot of times people are looking for peace and, you know, peace on earth, peace in Israel, peace in so many places and peace here, peace there. But Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace. I came to bring the sword because now it's time for us to put up or shut up. Now it's time for us to show and prove. Are we just calling ourselves Christians or are we followers and believers of Jesus Christ who crucify our flesh daily, who could care less about a title of prophetess or prophet or apostle or evangelist? We just want to be called good and faithful servant. That is our desire. You can keep the rest of the stuff. Glory to God, because even the accolades that we get now, we not taking them into heaven. We're going to get jewels in our crowns that we're going to cast at his feet. The same ones that he gave us to begin with, we'll be leaving them there at his feet. And there at his feet, they will lie. Glory to God. Rightfully so at the feet of the king. And so God was explaining to me about the election and he just said that whoever is there will be there to help push, push the antichrist agenda. He says, it doesn't matter how much Christians love or hate this person, but that this person will be there to help push the Antichrist agenda, which is why we are not to idolize them. We are not to look to them for salvation. The president of this country or any other country cannot save us if we are the true remnant of God. And the true remnant is already aware of this. The true remnant is not entangled with politics and calling themselves red or blue or this supporter or that supporter. God says that his true remnant are focused on him in the secret place because whoever's next is <laughs> here to push the Antichrist agenda. They're in the position because God is placing them in that position and putting the pieces together. God says, regardless of, with, of whether we give him permission or not, the pieces are being arranged because he already wrote it. And he said that in bold with boldness in the spirit. The pieces are already being arranged with or without your permission because I already wrote it, says the Lord of hosts. So whether you vote or you don't vote, that person is there to push the end time agenda. And when you look at where we are on the prophetic calendar, there's been so many things that have happened up to this point. And the next portions of the prophetic calendar is the rapture of the church. The great catching away, as the Bible actually technically calls it. Be ready, church. There are many things there that are trying to distract us and divert our attention away. So many people are spending so much time on their platforms and they look like men and women of God. But a lot of people are spending a lot of time on their platforms, you guys, talking about the latest celebrity, you know, exposure, the latest pastoral exposure, 
the latest this and this person is a witch and this person is a warlock. Teach the people the word of God. That is what will sustain them in these times. The Bible says, he that shall endure until the end shall be saved. I'm going to, I've said it many times before and I'm going to continue to say it. Confession of the Lord Jesus Christ being your Lord and Savior is only the beginning. You must endure until the end. Then and only then shall you be saved. There will be some things, people of God, that we have to endure until the very end. Don't let anybody fool you and tell you that you're not going to have to go through anything. Clearly, we've endured one pandemic. And yes, there will be other pestilences to come. And they will be attached to the angel of death. People of God, pay attention. Keep your eyes focused on Jesus Christ, period. Be looking up, church. Your redemption draweth nigh. Be looking up, church. Your redemption draweth nigh, church, body of Christ. Look up. Look up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah. You are worthy to be praised. The I am that I am. And one day, every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Forever and ever. One day, Lord, everyone's going to say the same. You are Lord. And one day, all will say so. Hallelujah. 